We have made two requests as uh, the leadership of Azimio here led by His Excellency Kalonzo Musioka. Number one, we are aware that there are still a number of Kenyans, very many Kenyans who are still missing. When we have asked the DCI uh, officers here, they have told us that it is not them who took these uh, uh, people. So despite the promises that were made by Ruto during the campaign, he is still maintaining police hit squads, people who are not even known to the police. And they are the ones conducting these abductions. At least for Alfred Keter, there were people there to film it. And that is why he is still safe here. As a father, I would never wish what happened to Alfred Keter to happen to any one of us who have children. That I'm taken away kicking and screaming in front of my own kids. Those kids are traumatized for life because nobody wants to see that happening to their parent. The second request we have made to the DCI is that if there is any leader in Azimio, any one of us, who they need to see or talk to or to speak to or to if you have any issue with any one of us we are available at very short notice you, there is no need to go and break down on Babu or Winos uh, door at home when his uh, wife and children are there if you want us let us know and we have given our numbers here they have Zivuna's number they have Honorable Kalonzo's number they have Eugene's number they have all of our numbers if they need us we will come the way that we have brought ourselves on time any single time they want us because we are not criminals and we will not accept to be treated as criminals. I thank you. Uh, we are here in solidarity with our brother Alfred Keter who was abducted yesterday and uh, I want to thank my colleagues, the lawyers who have come to stand with our brother. And uh, there's one protester who said that uh, William Ruto, when he's not flying, he's lying. When he's not flying, he's lying. I think this, since the Gen Z happened, this is the longest he has been in the country without flying. But he's doing a lot of lying, as we saw last night. He had lied about the number of uh, people who were killed. He said there were only six. Yesterday, on national television, he acknowledged that number was triple the number he had told the country before. And when he says there are 19, then you need to triple that number. I think him saying he's not responsible, that he has no blood on his hands, we want to tell him that the buck stops with the president. And he must take responsibility. Just the way he came out to say they did a good job. Now, the killings that are, are, are related to police shootings are done by these rogue police who continue abducting Kenyans the way they abducted our brother yesterday. And we want to tell him to take full responsibility. We've seen him trying to initiate another multisectoral forum of talks. He wants another NADCO. We had time with him, led by uh, our leader, Stephen Kalonzo Msioka, at Bomas. All the church leaders, religious leaders came, civil society, private sector, chamber, National Chamber of Commerce. We gave our views. We engaged. He refused to address the single most important issue, which was cost of living at Bomas, through the NADCO process. Now he cannot hide behind another multisectoral forum to diffuse the situation in the country. Let him engage the Gen Z that he didn't engage, that he promised to engage, but he should not hide behind the military. Let him remove the military from our streets and engage Kenyans. Let him not hide behind the police. Let him remove the police and actually engage the Kenyans and address the right issues. That's what we want to urge him and uh, to say pole once again to our friend, Natuko Pamoja. And, uh, colleagues. I just want to say that um, the manner in which our brother was actually arrested was uncivil and barbaric. In front of children between the ages of 12 and 6. And I can confirm that these kids were extremely traumatized. We spent the better part of the afternoon yesterday with them until Mishmiya was released and we allow them to go home. But I can imagine what the children are going through. In fact, my daughter who is away brought it to our attention because we have a family WhatsApp group and she wanted to know why has Baba Sasha been arrested? What has he done? What crime has he committed? Now, what, what explanation can you give to a 12-year child who is asking very hard questions? I only would want to um, ask the president to look at Kenyans in the eye and tell us how he would have reacted if his own children were treated the way um, Honorable Keter's children were treated. 
he is a father, I'm assuming. And if he's a father and a parent, then that is not how to behave. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Me, I was already annoyed. Ventura. Thank you. 